Hello again, and welcome to this fourth and last part of the MOOC provided by refiningisexciting.com dedicated to oil refining. In this part, we will focus on the conversion. Conversion is a major tool to produce more added value fuels from crude oil. I mean gasoline, kerosene, but also diesel of fuel. Remember, I left you in a terrible suspense at the end of the third video. In fact, once we have produced video, what to do with it? For sure, video molecules are too heavy to be directly incorporated into gasoline, kerosene or diesel fuel. The idea consists in transforming these heavy molecules into lighter ones. In other words, to convert them. And we will see together that there are two main options available. The choice between these two options is dictated by the local demand in gasoline and diesel fuel. Let's begin with the first option. This first option is called FCC. FCC stands for Fluid Catalytic Cracking. It means that we are going to crack molecules with the help of a catalyst in a fluid phase or gaseous phase. This time, the catalyst is not in a fixed bed. The catalyst circulates along with the vaporized video. Vaporized video molecules and the catalyst are going to be in contact during approximately one second. And during this second, the video is going to be converted into several products. Some gas, which will contain H2S, gasoline for approximately 50%, diesel fuel, approximately 20%, and the unconverted video, which we call slurry. It typically represents approximately 15%. Let's see closer how this FCC is going to be integrated within the refinery scheme. The gasoline produced in the FCC contains sulfur. Why? Because the FCC catalyst only converts molecules but do not remove the sulfur. It will thus be necessary to hydrotreat this FCC gasoline before blending it in the gasoline pool. Besides, this gasoline was produced at high temperature. It contains thus a high proportion of aromatics and thus high octane rating. This makes it possible to blend this FCC gasoline directly into the gasoline pool without reforming treatment. The diesel cut also has to be hydro-treated before blending in diesel pool. As far as slurry is concerned, it will be a good raw material to produce fuel oil. The second main option for video conversion is the hydrocracking. This unit is similar to a diesel hydro-treater. The main difference lies in operating conditions, I mean pressure and temperature. We are going to operate the at temperature up to 400 to 450 degrees at a pressure ranging from 150 to 180 bars. In these extreme conditions and in the presence of hydrogen, the video is going to be converted into gas and H2S, gasoline for approximately 20%, but especially caro and diesel fuel for approximately 70%. But how does the hydrocracking integrate into a refinery scheme? The naphtha produced in the hydrocracker has to be reprocessed in the reforming unit because it was produced in the presence of hydrogen. It has then a low aromatic content and its run has to be increased before blending in the gasoline pool. Kiro and diesel fuel produced in the hydrocracker can be directly incorporated into the kerosene and diesel pool because the presence of hydrogen in the unit desulfurized them. Here are displayed the final product's repartition according to the refinery scheme. Base case corresponds to a refinery without any conversion unit. In the base case, we produce approximately 50% of fuel oil. When we consider adding an FCC, the fuel proportion is reduced down to 30%. But this scheme tends to increase the proportion in gasoline. 
In Europe, especially in France, we need to produce diesel fuel. The hydrofracking allows to produce 50% of diesel fuel from crude oil. That's why this option is the preferred one in Europe. Yes, this is how the refiner manages to increase the proportion of finished products from crude oil by investing in conversion units. Before concluding, I would like to speak a little bit about the hydrogen in the refinery. It is in fact a very important molecule within the refinery. We saw before that hydrogen was fundamental to the good functioning of the refinery. In fact, we need hydrogen for the several hydro treatments to remove the sulfur. But by the way, where does this hydrogen come from? If you remember well the second video, we explained that reforming reactions produce hydrogen because we dehydrogenate naphthenes into aromatics. This hydrogen is used to feed the hydro treatments. You may now ask yourselves about the hydrogen production and more precisely, whether this production is enough or not to cover the refinery demand. The answer is yes and no. In fact, if the crude oil is low sulfur, and if we do not necessarily hydrate all cuts, then yes, this hydrogen is enough. But in case we treat a high sulfur crude, or even worse, if the refinery has a hydrocracking in it, the refinery requires additional hydrogen. In this case, two options. Either the refinery buys external hydrogen, or the refinery invests in a hydrogen production unit. Generally speaking, hydrogen production is based on natural gas reforming. Be careful, it shall not be confused with gasoline reforming. This unit is called a SMR for steam methane reformer. We let the natural gas react with some steam in the presence of a catalyst. And we produce some hydrogen and CO2. Finally, the H2S that is produced when removing sulfur is routed to a unit which allows to recover elementary sulfur that will be exported to the chemical industry. And it's now time for the conclusion. As we saw together, the refining industry faces high-level technical challenges. This implies passionate women and men with strong and robust technical skills. These people also have to be ready to adapt the refinery scheme to a market which is in constant evolution. For those who like the process engineering, it is a fantastic playground. Because we need all the domains of the chemical engineering, from the separation to the chemical reaction. This industry is also in perpetual evolution. Because of crude oil property evolution, more acid or heavier, and because of finished product specification evolution. Less sulfur in eating oil, for example. Note that regulations evolve in favor of energy savings and CO2 emissions reduction. Finally, in Europe, the market is said mature, and the refiner has to adapt his plant to make more added value products. Biofuels are also a newer source which can be incorporated in fuels. I invite you to watch the first MOOC of Refining is Exciting.com dedicated to biofuels. So, here we are. We are now at the end of this MOOC. I hope that you enjoyed these videos. As far as I'm concerned, it was a pleasure to spend these 45 minutes with you. Thank you for your attention and I invite you to find me on refiningisexciting.com to write me some comments about this MOOC and make the quiz to test your knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention and see you very soon for another MOOC.